Hello boys and girls, we're going to be looking at the evaluation task and in this series uh, we're going to just focus on understanding what the task actually uh, is all about. And we're going to start off by looking at the examiner's report, which is basically a document that the examiner uh, fills in after a set of exams have been done. And what they basically do is to highlight some of the weaknesses or the things that need to be focused on or things that uh, students need to work further or harder on. Uh, for them to maximise the marks. Now, if you read through this here, you can go through it very quickly. The evaluation remains an area for improvement for most students. Basically means that most students do struggle on this one task. Students need to be practised in explaining their choice design features. Now, we're going to talk about these words here shortly. And then justify how these decisions meet the needs of the intended audience and purpose through carefully selected examples. So you're going to ha identify some of the design features, things that you uh, decided to have on your website, uh, like the colour scheme, the house style, the buttons, the way things are laid out, just the overall look of your website and pick out certain um, areas, uh, which is what they're defining here as design features, then justify, so give reasons why you've done them. So you might say, I've done this because of this reason, I've done that for that reason. So you might focus on the navigation bar buttons, the banner themselves, the the choice of fonts, the colour scheme, um, the size of the logo, the position of the logo, the use of white space, and the list goes on and on. Explaining the points, the, the, the reasoning behind them. What you want to do is, you don't want to... Um, make a, a beautiful looking website that works really really well has all these interactive features and then not pick out these things um, as if it was all by chance or an accident of course it's no accident whatever you decide to create will be because of your careful planning and thinking so you need to identify these features and then explain justify how you came to those decisions why you made those things look like the way they look in the places that you wanted them to be. Always making sure that you go back to who you're making it for and why. So intended audience, meaning the target audience, who it's for, and the purpose, meaning why. Using selected examples. So that's where your evidence comes in. So this task is pretty much like in our school, we use the P-Well or the Peel uh, technique in English. Um, that's where this basically comes in. It's an extended piece of writing, really the only piece of writing that you have to do, and even then it's still typed up. The examiner goes on to say that, however, students' evaluations did not generally explain how different design features such as the colour scheme, font choice, page layout, visual hierarchy and image editing were appropriate for the site's audience and purpose. So people were failing to do this. So they want you, in fact, they need you and you need to pick out these points, which is what I basically mentioned. Yeah. Um, justifying uh, justification of important design decisions must uh, was often restricted to a rationale for the chosen color scheme. So a lot of people would just say the color scheme was chosen like this, so I chose this color scheme because it matches the logo. It's far too general. Students must also suggest possible improvements to their sites, the things that you could uh, do to make it better, and explain how these enhancements would improve the outcome. So you can't say, no, my website is perfect, because to be fair, in a, in a two hours uh, that you will have allocated to make the website, and the last 30 minutes obviously um, dedicated to the evaluation itself, maybe 20 minutes, um, you're not going to have a perfect looking website. Maybe you will, um, but there's always going to be some room for improvement. So you have to highlight so, some of those improvements, things that you think you could improve, and how those changes would be an improvement. However, students often described the client's requirements uh, that they had not met as a future improvements, which were not valid within the context of the client brief. To fully meet the level three assessment criteria, students need to provide realistic suggestions for improvement that clearly improve the site itself. So you have to talk about how you're going to improve or how, if you had the opportunity to go back onto it, or if you had another hour or two or three, what would you include or change or delete and why? Going back to the brief, you have to say, okay, if I did this, then, you know, this would, this would happen. 
you know, I was supposed to make this for this target audience. However, maybe this choice of font wasn't right. Maybe this choice of image wasn't right, or the size of the image, or the, the quality of the image, or the location of the image, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, these things will be all dependent on each individual person. So I can't even really give you specific examples because every one of these websites will be slightly different for the person next to you, uh, to the person next to you. So your weaknesses may be someone else's, you know, it may not be the same weaknesses that someone else will uh, make reference to. Um, just make sure that the key points here that you're taking is that they can't be general. They have to be specific things that you decided to do, design features, talking about why you did them, how they meet the needs of the target audience, and the purpose of the website itself. Then talk about specific examples, obviously, and specific improvements linking back to the brief itself, linking back to what the examiner asked you to do in the first place. So that's what their comments were. Let's look at the mark scheme. So you see here, obviously, it's out of six marks, and this could be the difference between a you know, really, really, really high mark and getting full full marks, basically, in the exam and getting an A star, or you know, just scraping um, a, a, a low A or a B, depending on how well you did for the website itself. But six marks is it's it's not something you should ignore. Um, so looking at this, you'll see um, one to two marks. The student has made superficial descriptive comments about this, some of their design decisions. Uh, comments might relate to their choice of images, but without linking this to the theme or intended audience. So you make general you know, passing statements, nothing specific, nothing intelligent, nothing actually going, you know, thinking, um, not necessarily out of, out, out of the box, but nothing to really wow or impress the examiner itself. There will be limited reference to audience and purpose, which means you haven't really talked about them much, and suggested improvements may not be appropriate or realistic. So whatever you said, it may not be appropriate, meaning it's not something that you really needed to do. There's not, it's not really much of an improvement. You, you've suggested something, but the examiner disagrees and says, actually, that how is that an improvement? It's not really an improvement. Or it may not be realistic. So you might, you know, suggest something that actually may not be feasible for the kind of person, people that you're actually aiming this website for. They might suggest adding content that could, in fact, distract users. Yeah, so you might say adding a game for no reason. Uh, and again, that's unrealistic or inappropriate. For the three to four marks, so this is a level two in the middle, students have uh, has made relevant descriptive comments about the, some of the important decision, uh, design decisions. So answer might explain how the choice of images is appropriate to the brief. So you may have given some specific examples and shown how it's appropriate to the brief or how it links to what the brief says. Again, if you don't remember what the brief is, it's what the exam uh, paper tells you uh, should be included in the website itself. There'll be some reference to audience and purpose. Some suggestions for improvements will be valid. For example, answer might include valid suggestions in some areas, such as how to make the text more readable in relation to the target audience, but other suggestions may not be clear or realistic. So this is one step further from the one or two level one, one or two marks. Uh, it's a sort of step in the right direction, but it's not quite there yet. Now, really want to focus on these here. I'm going to show you some examples of these two here, the one marks up to four marks. But it's the five to six marks, which is something very difficult. Not everyone manages to do, but it's good, again, to understand what it is, and then at least you can aim for it. For the level three, five to six marks, the students have made valid justifications for the effectiveness of their important design decisions. The justifications will be clearly related to audience and purpose, so you clearly say, this is for this target audience, which is what I was supposed to do. The website is supposed to sell an item, promote a place, promote a shop. I believe this picture does this because of this. I believe this music does this because of that. I believe this choice of colours is appropriate because of this. If it's supposed to be aimed at a young audience, a younger audience, teenagers and below, then you need to say, look, this choice of font does uh, this well because of this, this and this. If you're supposed to be for a mature audience, adults and upwards, then you need to say this choice of font or this choice of colours, this choice of images, uh, layout, uh, choice of words, I don't know, whatever it is, you need to say and bring it back to who it is. You can't just say it's appropriate, it's professional and that's it. You have to make reference to those groups of people, make reference to the purpose of the website itself, proving to the examiner that you actually read the brief before you made the website and that you understood it as well. They've given an example here, answer justifies why the choice of colour and images are appropriate, not only for the overall theme, 
but also the ways in which they help to in infuse the target audience. So infuse meaning to bring uh, interest, to make them uh, feel like as if this is a, a good place to visit, if it's a, a place that they should be visiting or shop. Um, it's something that should make them excited about this company and be really attracted and uh, something that appeals to whoever is viewing, your user. There will be valid suggestions as well for improvement. Uh, which will uh, which will be included. Um, it will be sorry. It will be clear how these would improve the outcomes. So there shouldn't be any second guessing. The examiner should be able to read us. Okay, fine. That makes sense. It's valid, and it's clear. However, you say, uh, however way you however you describe the improvements to be, it should be pretty clear how it would be done and why it would be done. So, for example, ANT includes valid suggestions for making the text more readable. So, and as, a, as an example of saying text more readable, for who? The target audience, which, and obviously this is a, a, a brief uh, uh, overview, you'd be more specific. So, if your target audience is for, is for children, then say uh, text more readable to children by doing this to it. Maybe making it larger. Maybe making use of more simple um, child-friendly uh, words. I don't know. Uh, in order to make it more likely that they would continue to browse, yeah? So you don't want to put them off, you don't want them to switch off and lose interest and basically go onto another website. So you explain what, how, and why. I think that's the easiest way to see improvements. What would you improve? How would you improve it? Why would you improve it? What is the impact of making that change? If the impact doesn't make sense, then the change isn't is pointless. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. Now you know what the examiner is looking for and what you should be marking. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the client brief uh, for a specific website, sorry, a specific exam paper. And that obviously will be uh, dependent on each paper that you look at. So the 2017 uh, January one will be different from the 2017 summer one. The 2016 uh, January will be different from the 2016 summer. So it really depends on which exam paper you're looking at. So. Make sure whichever video you open, you look at the correct um, exam paper date um, to understand the client brief itself.